folks this is Clyde here and today I wanted to do a quick video on uh, setting up some dumb RGB pixel nodes uh, and just running them off of the little three channel controller right here um, so that you can see them working and how easy it can be to set it up and test it uh, this will not get very in-depth but uh, and I will try to make this as simple as possible so that uh, any beginner can uh, jump into uh, oh. a little bit of RGB. First of all, uh, these are the tools that you're going to need. Um, this here is uh, a 12-volt power supply, a very inexpensive multimeter from, uh, uh, I want to say, Harbor Freight. I think I got it for $6. Uh, some um, small screwdrivers uh, for hobbyists, uh, a larger screwdriver. Uh, this is a wire stripper and a wire cutter is there as well. Um, also, I have some uh, connection leads, some uh, positive and uh, neutral connection leads. Uh, we have the three-channel dumb RGB DMX controller. And then finally, we have our uh, pixels, uh, our uh, dumb RGB nodes, and then a power supply cord. So right here we, we have up. our uh, DMX board, and the board is very very simple and I'm sorry about the shakiness I'm using my cell phone to record this uh, the board is very simple very simply set up and what I do is I outlined everything that's on here that is uh, relevant to us as a hobbyist using DMX and RGB. Okay, so here we go getting started with uh, our basic DMX three channel controller this controller specifically here can operate up to um, two amps per channel of RGB signal which means there's three channels so two four six six amps total can uh, run through this board uh, without overheating so that's quite a bit of RGB's I haven't calculated it out but it's quite a bit and uh, I want to take a walk around oh, the board up here, here we have our um, our outputs for our RGB and if we look closely you can see that these are what's called screw terminals and if you see the screwdriver I'm holding this is a hobby screwdriver it's a small one and you can get in here and make your connections with this hobby screwdriver and the leftmost one here is the blue this would be green output this would be the red output and this here would be the positive or common output moving down the board we have a dip switch setting and as you can see it's labeled 1 through 10 and what you do with the, di the dip switch setting is when you have it connected to a network you set the dip switches in a specific way to tell to tell the microprocessor what channel number it is and which one is each channel when you assign this and you set it up into a configuration program such as Lightarama or into uh, Nutcracker X lights, then the signal sent from the program goes to this board and is it's told whenever it's whatever channel number that this will operate the red, the green, and the blue channels. And then down on the bottom here we have our DC voltage incoming. Whenever you run power into this little controller, you run a DC power supply and over here this left side or the right side here is our positive and the left side of this connector is our neutral moving over here this is the more advanced part of doing an RGB uh, animated uh, controlled setup and this is the data port the uh, neutral is the leftmost the, the neutral is the leftmost uh, connector the middle one would be our positive data and the right one would so, be our ground. That's the basics of this board. Um, the board, like I said, can handle two amps per channel. And there's three channels, a red, a green, and a blue. And if that's two amps, four amps, six amps total is what this board can handle. That's a lot of these small RGB dumb string notes. Here we have our 12-volt, uh, 350-watt, 12-volt DC power supply converts uh, our 110 amp uh, outlet if we were to plug into a wall outlet into an output for 12 volt usage 
and uh, 350 watts is uh, quite a large supply. Currently I am running in one of my uh, controller boxes over uh, over 500 of the dumb RGB oh, string. The other thing light, you see here uh, is we have, honestly this is just a, uh, a typical uh, extension cord that you would purchase you know at uh, at Walmart or, or Sears or someplace and uh, it's nothing more than what it's called SPT and that's enough to run our power supply right here for as much as we're going to use it for right now now you'll notice that this power supply or this uh, cord has what's called uh, a polarized plug the wider plug up on the top of your screen the wider plug is the neutral line and uh, the smaller, skinnier plug is if you our look power closely, line. one of these is smooth and the other side is ribbed. Um, it might be hard to see. This is the rib side. And then this our is the smooth side. Cord. And our smooth cord is our power cord. So what I'm going to do after I pause the video is I'm going to connect the ribbed side to the neutral and the smooth side to the what is over here. I'm going to put the rib side to the neutral and the, the smooth side to the load which will be our positive all right and here's our connection I used the screwdriver here and I just connected the ribbed side of our plug and it if it, it is connected with the uh, positive side here for the uh, positive pin on our plug neutral side there neutral is connected there the next step that I would do is with the multimeter right here We'll plug in the power supply, and then we're going to take our probes and we're going to test the power supply to make sure that the power supply is actually outputting our 12 volts. Sometimes we have pixels or RGB nodes that uh, do not require 12 volt. Maybe they need a lower amount. And this little connection or this little adjuster right here allows us to set it exactly where we want our power supply to uh, output uh, our level of voltage to. Okay, so here we are. I have my um, multimeter set up, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the black and put it over top of and touch the, um, the pin right here, the output pin on the power supply for the neutral, and the red's going to go on the pin for the positive. And I'll lift my arm, and you can see that I'm running a 12.29... Uh, DC volt, 12.29, 12.3 DC voltage on my multimeter. What that tells me is I need to make an adjustment and I'm going to counterclockwise adjust that little screwdriver uh, adjustment there uh, down so that I'm getting exactly 12 volts. It's bouncing around a little bit. Um, this little multimeter here, I got this at uh, uh, Harbor Freight and all I did was I set the connection here or the uh, the adjustment wheel here to point at the DC voltage side and uh, it's pointed at the 2-0 um, on the, under the DC voltage uh, Okay, and we're back side. with um, our connection to our board, our DMX board, and as you can see, I chose to use the white for my positive and the black for my uh, neutral. Now in DC voltage land, we use black as our neutral and we would normally use red as our positive. I do not have red wire, so I chose to use the white as this my is positive. This is typical 14-gauge uh, wire that you would find in any uh, housing building or uh, you know wall switch plate or, or plug wire, etc. So, as you can see, with the power hooked up and running, and we've set our volts to 12 volts, uh, you can see that the green indicator is lit here, the LED is lit, and that tells us that this is receiving power. The next step is to strip the wires and uh, connect our RGB pixel uh, dumb nodes to the end of this connection here. Okay, here we see our dumb RGB uh, dumb nodes and uh, this is my wire stripper and because I'm using my cell phone to video this and I don't have a tripod to mount it on um, I was just going to show you how simple it is to strip these wires all four of them with this stripper and I just squeeze the trigger and it 
if I zoom in there, you can see how uh, it's a little little foggy. Uh, there we go. You can see how all four wires have been stripped. And uh, now I'm going to pause it and I'll hold it up. So right now I'm just going to split these wires so that they're all separated. And then we're going to connect them up to our RGB uh, DMX controller. Okay, so we have uh, split all the wires up. And uh, we have, uh, I've done a little twist to the wires so that they slide right into the connectors there very easily. And um, one, I want to uh, point out that sometimes these wires come in differently. Um, from, from Ray, if you notice this little pixel node here, you can, I'll zoom in, maybe, maybe it'll become a little more clear. You see there's like, where my left finger is, there's two little chips in a row. There's one there, one there, and then there's a blank spot, and then another chip. If you look at the color of the strings, you see that blue is on the left, green is on uh, to the right of the blue, then you have the yellow wire, which has no chip in it, and then you have a red wire, which does have a chip. What that signifies is, is that the yellow wire in this set of dumb RGB nodes is our common or positive line we'll be connecting that positive line with the connection that is right here on this upper side, which is our common line or positive. Remember that this one here is our red, this one here is our green, and this one here is our blue. So as I hook these up, you'll see the yellow one is crossed over. I will cross the yellow one and the red one, and uh, the green and the blue will match up correctly with this. So when I come back, uh, you'll see the RGBs have lit up and they'll be on a test pattern because our controller uh, dip switch setting is set for number 10 to be on and function number 4 is on. So we'll be back having these running. Alright, we are back and as you can see we have our whole string of uh, dumb RGBs plugged in just as I said they would be where the yellow is in the top one, the common we have the red and then the green and then the blue. And that pretty much is the basic step to getting this controller to run using a power supply, using that 12 volt power supply, the green cord extension going to our outlet, our connections, which we made, and uh, obviously our dumb RGB pixel nodes. And, uh, and you can see how simple it is to set this up. So uh, this is uh, I hope this is basic as basic can get, and if you have any questions on the basic setup, then uh, post your comments down below.